Hello YouTube, this is Firebrand Chris, and today I'm going to show you guys how I load my 41 Magnum plinking round. We're going to start by sizing the brass. Now this is going to be fresh, fresh Starline brass, so uh, there's there's going to be no need to like. Um, you know, the prime, the primers and all that type of stuff. Now, there is one step, since this is the first time I'm going to be showing you guys um, a straight wall magnum style cartridge. There's no need to lube the case because my sizing, my Lee sizing die, has a carbide sizing ring in it. So carbide is extremely hard, and it's able to size this brass, you know, and it, it puts a little couple of scratches on them. But uh, overall, it's pretty good. I put that in here. So I'll show you guys ten. do enough of these you can get kind of a workout you know doing this and there you have it there's 10 alright next stage you're gonna be priming the brass so if you've ever watched my YouTube videos before I use a RCBS hand priming tool uh, with the CCI strips if I can find the strips but if if I can't find the strips I usually just put the primers in some strips and so this is labeled LP for large pistol, well, not large pistol primer, but large primer in general. Ouch. Was my wrist popping? See? See, they're pretty good. I really do like Starline brass. Some of the best brass you can buy. Really wish they would branch off more into some of the rifle calibers. That's number 10, and that completes this stage. Okay, so in this stage, we're going to be skip expanding the case mount. Let's go ahead and take our sizing die out. Um, going to stick 
a Redding expander die. Now I tried to find a Lyman M die because I love those those expander dies made by Lyman. Um, they actually discontinued the 41 Magnum model. I actually called them on the phone. Let's go ahead. And let's expand it pretty good. Sucks that they discontinued it. Just gonna do ten of them. I don't know if you can tell, but I own a lot of stuff in calibers that are not so common. You know, like 41 Magnum, uh, 9mm Ultra. I have a pistol chambered in 32 NAA. So I'll probably be making reloading videos uh, dealing with the 32 NAA. I know I'll make a reloading video for that, and I plan on making a video for 450A SOCOM and 300 Blackout. In due time, in due time. And that's the tenth one. So now we're going to move to uh, the powder charge but as you know I only show like one or two of the powder being uh, placed in the cases it's kinda hard to do while I'm uh, holding the iPod so I'll just show one or two okay for this stage we're dispensing the powder I'm gonna be running five grains of title group you know a Hodgkin title group it's pretty good powder to use, uh, you know, as far as a plinking round for 41 Magnum. I had to tweak this a little bit because uh, I couldn't find any load data that uh, represented a 225 grain uh, bullet, hard cast bullet. So they had 215 grain hard cast bullets, and they had, uh, I think it was a, what was it, 245, 235 or something. Let's see. Good thing about this is the case mouth, because it's a magnum cartridge. Well, not just magnum in general, but the case mouth is wide enough to where I don't have to struggle with one hand uh, to try to place this powder charge. I keep telling myself that I'm going to get a different powder pan, and I probably will eventually. Good things think about doing this, you know, with this machine. Of course, I check. I have another scale that I checked. Uh, the it's like every depending on how much I load, it's like every second or third round. I'll check for consistency of weight. <coughs> but you can pretty much see. You can look in there and see how much powder you have in there. So I mean, that kind of minimizes the risk of placing a double charge. Okay, in this stage, we are going, well, not we, because that makes it sound like there is more. Uh, well, you know, I can always say we because it's me and it's whoever's watching. Okay, enough of that. Um, in this stage, we're going to be seeding the bullet. Um, I actually have a Redding uh, competition seeder die. Like I said before in previous videos, if possible, I always try to get a competition seeder. It just makes seeding bullets easier. And if not, I always try to see if they have a micrometer uh, uh, seeding, uh, you know, seeding plug that uh, that's compatible 
let the seeding die. So we're gonna go ahead, set our die inside the Lee, the Bre uh, what's it? Lee Quick Change Breach type system. I always forget forget what that thing's called. Uh, right now, for this particular load, I'm using uh, 225 grain round nose flat point uh, bullets made by Missouri Bullet Company. They're pretty nice people. I've, I've talked to them several times on the phone. For some reason, when I order, I can a lot of the times I can never pay on the on the internet site with my credit card. The option disappears for me, and I guess a couple of other people that happens to them as well. So um, I always have to call them to complete the order. Now, for this particular load, I'm seeding it to the crimp groove, so... It comes out exactly, I don't know if you guys can see it, at 1.590, which is uh, the max. Length, that overall length for this this cartridge, according to the Lee book. That's also where the crimp groove is on this, on this particular bullet. So Now, like I was saying before, I always try to buy uh, the Lyman M dies because when you're loading hard cast or low bullets, it tends to somewhat minimize the amount of lead that's being shaved off. Not that there's a lot of lead being shaved off right now, but I uh, still have some. Right. Whoa. Almost dropped. Good thing I caught it. And there you have it. That's ten. So the next stage is going to be uh, crimping the brass. Okay, in this stage, I'm going to be uh, crimping the brass with my Lee factory crimp. I think this is the factory crimp. Well, this particular crimp die has a carbide sizing ring. So if you develop any bulges, any bulges in the case while you're, uh, whatever you're doing, you know, side, well, expanding the brass or, you know, I've never known for a bulge to form in the 41 Magnum brass, but I guess it's possible. Well, there's this this uh, carbide sizing ring in this uh, crimp die, it pretty much shapes everything back down to, you know, where it's supposed to be. Let's just say that. Um, 
it does shave a little bit of the brass off, so I wonder if that will lead to shardened brass life. I guess it's yet to be seen. Let's go ahead and stick that in there. Now we're applying not a really heavy crimp, but it's a decent crimp. So that way we don't, so this is not going to be like a full power magnum round, but you still don't want the bullets moving around, you know, from recoil. There. I don't know if you guys can see that crimp. It's decent crimp in there and it's into the crimp groove. Finish up the remaining nine. <sighs> now it was my my understanding. Well, you know what? I'll save that for the review of the finished product. Save this talk for that. As you can see, I tend to use a mismatch set of uh, different tools for my reloading experience uh, sometimes you actually have to look around at different companies every company to me seems to make something really good so sometimes for certain calibers you just have to pick and pull or pluck or choose whatever word uh, you want to use and then that's the tenth one now we're going to move to the finished product Aha, my finished product. And there's my Ruger um, Blackhawk 41 Magnum. We're going to move that out of the way. Don't need that. And you might have seen this doohickey in, the, in the, the, the beginning picture. That's also chambered in 41 Magnum. Uh, let's move that doohickey out of the way as well. Because we will not be needing these. But... They make for very good uh, picture for the for the beginning of the video. Now I have this uh, this Wilson case gauge, and um, stick it in here. Just drops right in. So in theory, it should chamber in my gun. That's how these case gauges work. You'll know because if your rounds all Let's just say effed up. And uh, it's not going to fit in there. I'll also tell you if it's too long. Now that bullet is, is protruding extremely far out of the, 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 the end portion of this. Then it's probably too long. But there, all's good. I, mean, I can test all of them. They just kind of fall right in. I would suspect that they would fall right in considering, you know, size it would have lead carbide sizing die. And even when it was crimped, uh, that crimp die had a carbide sizing ring on it, so... They were weren't within specs. That'd be pretty crazy. And I, I try to get these in every caliber that I got, if possible. And I know Wilson doesn't make them in every caliber. I contacted him once about making a uh, one of these for nine millimeter Makarov, and they said they would not do it. 
it doesn't hurt to, to try, you know, see if they'll do it. Uh, but, I'm going to load up some more, actually. Probably load up, see, this is 20. So I'll load up 30 more. Take it to the range this weekend, possibly. Uh, but, like always, I always try to thank you guys for, for watching my videos. Because you obviously don't have to watch them if you didn't want to. Uh, so, I'll probably make another 41 Magnum video. Maybe uh, using uh, jacketed bullets. So, it, just look for that. I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe soon, maybe later, who knows. But thanks guys for watching.